So these are some of the fundamental principles about feng shui. And actually, this is in your handout here. So don't feel as though you have to be scribbling or writing. But I just want to kind of share with you some of these fundamental principles, which will be for this whole series. So the first principle is about being in nature. So look at your apartment. Do you have natural elements in your home? When I say natural elements, do you have beautiful plants? Do you have natural materials that are used in your home? Uh, do you have a little bit of water, running water, which is really very nice? So let's look at the element about nature in your space. Another fundamental principle is about chi or energy. How do you define energy? How do you define chi? So one way I talk about it, you don't want the chi to go too fast and you don't want the chi to stop or to stagnate. So is there some place in your apartment that you never use? So think about that area. So that means that chi energy is stagnant or has stopped. Is there too many piles of the New York Times? Or is there clothes that you never really get to? Or is your closet stuffed and you never looked into the closet? So what is the energy associated with? So we're going to be taking a look at that energy. The fundamental principle about feeling safe and protected. So this is the armchair configuration. Another principle about feng shui is this, about this dynamic balance. And so you probably have seen this yin-yang symbol. A little bit of the dark in the white, a little bit of the white in the dark. But it has to be a dynamic balance. Another fundamental principle that happens in our lives is about change. And so we talk about the I Ching. What is happening in your life. There's always going to be high moments, there's going to be low moments. But the fundamental principle about feng shui, we want to be harmony among all of this high and the low moments. So this is about the I Ching. So we're going to be teaching you this diagram known as a Bagua. And I'm also going to be telling you about the five elements, a very fundamental principle. So let's go into the next slide about that. So. Um, well, actually, we'll see a couple slides, then we'll kind of go into the Bagua. So um, the first thing is, here is an apartment building in Repulse Bay in Hong Kong. This is a, considered to be a well-designed feng shui building. Now, number one, it's a building under construction, and I'm photographing this building from the beach. How would you like to live in this apartment building? Now, the interesting architectural feature from a feng shui perspective is the big opening in the building. See the square opening in the building? And the reason is the developer called upon a feng shui master and he's designing this building and say, okay, Mr. Feng Shui Master, I want to make sure my building has excellent, auspicious, or good luck energy. So what do you see here? And the first thing the feng shui master said, you are blocking the dragons in the mountains and the dragons want to come to the water at the beach so you need to create an opening to allow the dragons to come through the building to connect to the water's energy so now the developer says oh mr architect you know the feng shui master says i need to allow the dragons to come to the water what can we do so the architect said well let's create an opening to symbolize to allow the dragon to come to the water. And so this is what was designed. So, and also even the design of the building has water energy. It's very gently and curving over there. Now, this is kind of interesting. What if you are living in the apartments above the opening? Is that a good feng shui position for you to buy an apartment for your family? Because in a way, that's no support for you over there. How would you feel if you got one of these apartments with one of these little balconies and you feel like this pressure kind of like coming down onto you? So that's one of the things that we'll be taking a look at in terms of feng shui. What is your energy in buying this apartment? Is your energy like really great like Donald Trump and it doesn't really matter that I live on top of the opening? Or is your health being affected? You buy this apartment, all of a sudden, your career somehow gets affected, or your health gets affected. So this is something that is going to be very interesting in this series, is how to evaluate our own personal chi or our energy relative to the space that we're living in.
So that will be something to kind of think about, the macro and the micro of feng shui. Here's the Bank of China, located in Hong Kong. And one of the things about this um, building designed by I.M. Pei is about the Sha Qi. That's the sharp corners that are coming to you. I mean, think about the sharp corners that might be coming to you in your office or even in your apartment. I just did a consultation today for a woman. She is in a 300 square foot studio. Her bed is built in. She has a little kitchenette and she asked for a feng shui consultation. And the first thing that I noticed that there was a sharp corner in the kitchen area coming directly to her, to her bed where she's sleeping. So I made a feng shui suggestion to soften that curve and she was so excited. Go to Home Depot and just buy a piece of wood and attach it to the corner and make it a rounded corner. And actually that happened to be in her relationship corner and that's one of the things she wants to do. She wants to open up a relationship in her life and we painted just that corner of the room a beautiful rose lavender color including the new molding. She was so excited. And also when I do feng shui consultations I need to work within her budget. Your time, your money, and your energy. And for her, she says, that's in my budget, and that's something I can go down to 23rd Street, go to Home Depot, and I can glue that corner, and I can paint it. That's very easy. And that is what is known as a transcendental feng shui cure. And so here, that was the first thing I noticed is, Sarah, you are being cut by the sharp corner, so we need to find something to soften that. So this is one of the things that we're going to be taking a look at your apartment space. Now, the traditional feng shui solution for addressing these negative energies that are coming to you is to have a, one of these little bagua mirrors. See this octagonal mirror there? A bagua, it's an octagon, it has a little mirror in it. And the concept of this mirror is very interesting. For the Chinese, you place this mirror above your door, or you place it in the window against the sharp corner of that office building coming to you. And that concept is that you are changing our mind that you're not going to allow any negative influences or energies to come to you in your space. So this is a very interesting little concept here. This $3, $5, $10 Bagua mirror, you can get it at Chinatown. Have we changed the situation outside? Have we moved that Bank of China? Have we moved the cemetery that might be next door to your apartment building? Or the Qi energy of Madison Avenue coming directly to your window? No. What have we changed? We have changed our minds, and our minds are so powerful that we're going to allow this little $3, $5 Bagua to change our whole attitude about the situation. And our minds are so powerful just to allow that to happen. So this is a very interesting concept. And now think about your own culture. We have a rabbit foot we can carry with us. Or for the Chinese, maybe carry today. Uh, this is we're in the year of the metal tiger. So that Chinese talisman to wear to protect us against the metal tiger this year is a jade pig. So just carry a little jade pig with you. And that would be a way to offset any negative energies that the metal tiger might be affecting us this year. So this is something which is really very interesting. So um, next slide. Is that coming? Let me do it again. Okay. So, here is a feng shui solution for the two Hong Kong banks. Now, this is very interesting. This is on one of my feng shui study tours. Uh, this is the uh, British Embassy in the foreground. There is the Bank of China in the distance, you know. Now, look at the other bank. The other bank is over here. This is the Hong Kong and Shanghai Bank, designed by Norman Foster. Now, Norman Foster also had a feng shui master to help him design that particular bank. And look what the feng shui master proposed. Hey, there's this Bank of China across the way. He might be uh, getting into your assets over there. 
So how are we going to protect your assets? And look what that bank of Hong Kong Shanghai Bank did. They put two cannons facing towards that bank. Now, of course, there's a whole discussion about this. Is that good feng shui, having little battles there? Probably not, but this is the way to kind of acknowledge that you don't want this energy, the bank, to be affecting the assets of that bank over there. Now, are these real cannons? No. Those are really the mechanical system equipment on the top of the building, so then you can wash the windows, take care of the mechanical you know, components of the building over there. But look at the design intention. It's just like a bagua, right? Talk about protecting the assets of the bank. So here is the bagua. Now this is in your sheet in your handout. And the bagua means the eight trigrams. Ba means eight in Chinese. And the gua means the trigrams, the eight trigrams. And each of these trigrams, see the three lines here, represent different qualities or different aspects of our life in our space. So there is a wealth and power area in your apartment. There's a fame. There's a marriage relationship, children, future, helpful people, travel. There's a career area. There's a knowledge area. There's a family area. And in the center is yin yang. And actually the center of our space actually represents our health. Because that to me is the ultimate feng shui. Now this is a very interesting diagram. I call it an energy template. And um, now, Let's take a look at this tool that I brought with me. This is a lopan. This is a Chinese compass. And this Chinese compass is actually very similar to a lot of Chinese compasses in the fact that they all have a magnetic unit of the center, you know, to orient north, south, east, west. But every Chinese compass all have the bagua right as the first circle. And then you have all these Chinese characters that surround this circle. Now, each of these Chinese characters has a meaning to it. And the Chinese language, of course, is very symbolic. So there's a lot of interpretations that are associated with these areas here. So when I do a feng shui consultation for you and your home or your office situation, so we're going to put interpretations as to each of these areas for you. So what does wealth and power mean for you? Does that mean enhancing the monies or the financial situation in your life? Or does that mean enhancing your inner power, your authority, fame, or what you're noted for? That's your reputation. So maybe you are noted to be a writer. Maybe you're an artist. Maybe you're just mom. But maybe what you're really noted for is to be very spiritual, very compassionate, how you work with other people. Marriage relationship commitment. Of course, it's a very special relationship between a couple, but maybe this could be the commitment or relationship to your work. Some people are literally married to their work. This area is also known as...